I will have to fit a key to this this uh, shaft and flywheel as I pretty much found out that uh, there's no two of them alike if you take them out of original engines and I probably should show you something the flywheels that was on this engine that were so uh, crooked bent something was out of out of out of place and as I was going through flywheels, I found these two right here that was just, you know, within just a matter of a, a couple of thousandths that they run so true, I decided them to use them on this engine. And basically, when you look at the engine, you know, it's just an old uh, one and a half horsepower M, nothing, nothing, nothing special about it. But somewhere along the line, in the later years, they changed the casting if you notice right here on this flywheel it says exh right there exhaust and then down here it's uh, ign ignition and uh, and and there's a there's a mark there on the flywheel okay and i did i did go ahead with a file and just knocked uh, knocked the rust off of there so that we could see them and there's a there's an error there's one there's four hash marks and a little line right here showing the rotation so this is a earlier model flywheel than was on this 1926 the 26 had that designation there casted right here and here in the flywheel the uh, let's see another thing was about straightening flywheels even to the point of remachining them and you can do that but I think one of the comments was you know the it was like an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch out of out of kelter here it was not straight at all and I think the comment was, could you machine that away? Well, yes, you can do that. You can do that. Um, and, and you do, if you put this in the lathe and, and turn that around, you'd have to have a very large lathe. And, and, and the RPMs to turn cast iron would be so slow that it probably wouldn't be any, 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 any more danger on the rotation uh that would not be the biggest factor the biggest factor is if you machine that much away to true the flywheel up again then you've got it so out of balance that uh, you, it would have to be balanced again so it, it would take a really good machine shop uh balancing facilities to carry that through that uh it's just not a good idea because it, it, that's the nature of cast iron, and I'm, I'm not going to, it, this is not a metallurgical video by no means, it's just some observations through the years that I have made about cast iron. If this, this flywheel, I think, now this is just me, I think that you could bend this thing a quarter of an inch out of, out of, out of square, and, and it would stress the metal to the point where it didn't break. You know, it, it was still intact at that point. But if you've got one that's out of a, out of alignment, cast iron, and the, and the problems in these spokes right here, they're, they're, it's it's heat transfer between the spokes, and and you know, back in the days, it, it, casting wasn't that good. So, in order to straighten this, if it was a quarter inch out of out of out of straight when, when you when you push it back then you have to come past that quarter inch you you would have to move the flywheel at least a half inch or so this away to take up for the spring action and even as brittle and as solid as cast iron is it still springs back uh, the, you can heat the you can heat the spokes if, and and I have I've I've had I've you know I I've had, I did it enough to where that I know not to do it again. You you can actually heat these spokes up, and you can draw this flywheel. You you can draw it. It's harder to do with cast iron than regular iron, but you can you can move it with some heat, 
even to the point where we're moving like these three spokes this way and moving them that way in order to take up about half the play on each side. So, so you can do that. Uh, but it's the, the problem is, is where that if you get it hot enough, cast iron, if you get it hot enough, it's where that the heat and the cold stops at. Right here, you may be heating right here, and the fracture, the weak place, would be out here somewhere or another. So, it's just not good at all. Well, my advice, especially on these M's here, as common as they are, and I think that I think they made somewhere around 240,000 of these engines in the total run there, from about 1918 up to 32, 33, somewhere in there, 17, you know, to 33. Somewhere like that, 240,000, a roundabout figure. So, uh, and 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 I have noticed too that uh, th these parts here are available at engine shows and on the internet. So you can find a flywheel at a reasonable price. Uh, with that said, the easiest way to bend these flywheels is to pick them up by the flywheels uh and and it you know what i mean it's just plain stupidity i mean if you do it uh look it up in the dictionary if you if you put a strap across here i show you something if we if we can see it if you if you put a strap across here if you go right across here like this right here and you come up here and you tie that up yonder Okay, when 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 you pick that up, then you're 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 pulling the top of these flywheels together, and believe me, these spokes is not strong enough to pick that engine up without giving. So if you picking your engine up like this right here, uh, you could have a cracked flywheel. Just write that on a rock over there somewhere or another. Back to the engine. Flywheel on there, just, just, I, I may want to take this off and show you something, so I'm not going to set that, that, uh, uh, gib key tight, but this one is fitted correctly, the distance there is the distance of the width of the flywheel, and it will clear the pulley wheel, and that's set tight, and this, this crankshaft is pushed in this direction, tight against that and this goes over there, tight against that and that's up there snug enough to hold it <coughs> so we can get us an idea here uh, to do engine timing and engine ignition is two different things you adjust them differently not together so in order and this one right here has not been adjusted any at all um, to adjust the exhaust valve, let's do that first. Is you you want you want that exhaust valve pushrod to be just leaving this exhaust rocker arm, and, and that's a, that's just a rounding, a small rounding surface there. That's not indented or any in and and you will find these <clears throat> that are wore so much offset misalignment that they'll wear a big old lip on one side okay if you turn that to adjust it and you get that lip over here then it'll be an adjustment just but just within a very short time that will wear away and then you got adjustment again so that does need to be a really good nice fit also, another thing is this this rocker arm right here. You you want that to be straight across this way with your engine. If you adjust this bolt right here, you can you you can offset it quite a bit. So with that said, and the other day I talked to somebody, and they said something about they don't build them like they used to, and it's probably a good thing. Because just as I was laying out some wrenches to to take this engine apart, there'd be quite a few. Usually the head bolts are are that way. But you you see that 
that's a that's a five eighths and it's it's really loose it wants to come off if you use this to tighten that up you'd round the corners off and then a nine sixteenths won't even attempt to go on it so on this one you you really have to have adjustable wrench and, and you know I, I know what you're going to say you're going to say it's metric put a metric wrench on there uh well it's 1926 you know i don't want to use no metric uh, if i don't have to i'd rather keep it all american but what i'm going to do you see what i'm turning this right here and the only thing i'm doing is turning that little square head right there um about one turn and even it's a little offset if i turn it like right there it, it it's more center onto that bow stem so that's kind of where i want that and i've got about a thread showing it's not bottomed out this way so i can make a little adjustment right there and that's where you get you that's where you get your and i'm just going to snug that up uh, enough you know enough to where it's it's tight uh and and this is a weak place right here so so when you're uh, tightening this up even to the point where that you would put you would put a wrench on the inside there and then tighten the two two together okay now they're locked together and you didn't put any pressure on this and this one here is straight across like like I say if I run out anymore it'd be like that so that's all good and to go there now the measurement on a on a on a on an initial setup will be done with this with this with this uh push rod. Uh and that's a that's a that's a nine sixteenths back in there. And the way you do that turn the flywheel in the direction until it comes on compression okay and and you'll know when it comes on compression because it's getting it's getting hard to start and and when you're doing this right here even though we're working on the exhaust you do need the spark plug grounded to the engine or either just the wire itself grounded because we're going to be tripping the mag as we turn this flywheel to make these adjustments and you want that spark to go somewhere so I've got everything hooked up the uh, the flywheel you bring it around to get it on compression and this this right here is only familiarizing yourself to the position where the, where the piston and, and everything's at compression will tell you that so it's all coming up on compression right here is a mark coming up so if you come back over here and look at it that's ignition okay when and I'm telling you this for a reason ignition would be right there and and immediately I can see that this mark and that mark down there it was a little bit late. Now 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 the next the next and if you look at the rocker arm up there we we've got about three eighths about three eighths. So in order to adjust this to make this adjustment here on your exhaust valve is you. Turn the turn the engine com one complete turn, and remember the exhaust valve is the second mark. So you bring that around to where that is straight down in alignment. Remember, the mark right here is in alignment with the mark on the crankcase. Dead center. Now, when you come up here and you look at this push rod. You can see right there I've got an eighth of an inch. I've got one eighth of an inch. Okay, if I adjust it with this right here, then then that will put this too much out of alignment. So what I want to do, is, and the way you do that, is turn it out, outwards.
I'll show you. And and all the time now as you turn is you're turning that out of that fork back there this way. And I, and I do have tension on the spring and this little thing right here that's kind of important too. That little um The, there's an indent in this rod right here, and that indent is there for a purpose. They just didn't put that there for nothing. The uh, th that's the tension on the spring, the correct tension. If if you look at yours, and this little collar is not a, that set screw is not into that indent on that rod, then it's not right. And then you can see there with just one turn, half a turn, I've closed that gap up almost half. So I think we'll have to go one more. Yeah, I, I, can, I can pretty much tell. Yeah, we'll have to go another way. And that's a little close to that fuel line, so what I'm doing is putting that wrench up in there and prizing that fuel line over to get that past here and and you can see it's closing right on up up to now now I'm just looking in yonder and I've got about oh it ain't much about a sixteenth I'm going to say okay so I want this right here if you remember this this rod here had a little bend in it so I, I know that this set screw is is in the bend this way so I want this to either be up or down in this case, uh, it's going to end up up. Okay, now now we've got the the current the bend in the right position, and and when I put this together, I screwed this rod all the way back to where I could see the end of it in the end of that fork right there. So I do know I had some pl some some threads in order to come out this way, but I also had some threads left there where I could go back that way a little bit more in order to uh, uh, make this make this adjustment the correct one. Let's read that in the book.